Hi YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're continuing our exploration of Snowflake Cortex and the products and services that make up Cortex within your Snowflake environment. We've covered a lot of the ML functions that make machine learning models accessible and available to non-data scientists. And if you're interested in seeing those videos, take a look back and I'll put a card up for the playlist at the top of your screen as well. Um, but in this video, we're going to look at a couple of more services, Universal Search and Snowflake Copilot. So I hope you find this video useful. Now, search is fundamental to how businesses interact with data today. And Snowflake recognized that uh, last year, they made the move to acquire a company called Neva to accelerate the search within Snowflake's data cloud. Now, as part of that acquisition, obviously some of the Neva employees moved across into the Snowflake world. And Neva in the past has been instrumental in developing services such as, such as Google search advertising and YouTube monetization. Now we fast forward a year on and Snowflake have taken the Neva search capability and integrated it into Snowflake within Snowflake and provided you a service called Universal Search which searches across worksheets, database objects and so on. So let's take a look to how this works. Here we are now in Snowflake in the snow site web UI now in a navigation bar on the left hand side you've got this search option which actually takes you to the universal search. This allows you to quickly and easily find objects within your account or data products on the marketplace or even documentation within the Snowflake community knowledge base articles. So for example you can use natural language to describe what you're looking for. <coughs> <coughs> Now, when you use the search, you can also use natural language to describe what you're looking for. So you can use keyword search terms such as opportunities, and this will bring up everything in your account that matches that. If there's nothing in your account, in your Snowflake account or environment, it will just simply leave that out. So if we go tables and views, it hasn't found anything. If we go back to all, we've got a bunch of documentation links. If we click one of these, it will take us directly to the Snowflake documentation. So quite handy and quite efficient if you're looking for things, as well as taking you to the marketplace for potentially relevant objects that might be of interest to you. You can also use more conventional language search terms such as sales opportunities um, that are likely to be close, for example. And again, if you've got um, CRM or pipeline, sales pipeline data in your Snowflake account, um, you'll be able to use this search functionality like this. If I go to customer, I know I've got tables in the Snowflake sample database that has customer in there. So if I go, well, here's, here we go, my databases and schemas, Snowflake sample data. I've also got tables and views with relevant columns highlighted here. If I click on one of these tables, it takes me directly into the Object Explorer itself, where it's highlighted the table, it's taking me directly to that table, and then I can go and quickly explore the data I've got. So, something that Snowflake have introduced should make it much more efficient to find things that you need easily and quickly. Now in preview, we've got Snowflake Copilot available in certain regions, and this is also part of the Snowflake Cortex suite of services and products. And it's an LLM powered assistant that helps to simplify data analysis. Now Snowflake Copilot is a model that's fine-tuned by Snowflake that runs securely inside Snowflake Cortex, so within your Snowflake account, and it's a fully managed AI service. Now, that approach means that your enterprise data assets and metadata always stay securely within Snowflake. Snowflake Copilot also follows the RBAC security model and provides suggestions only on the data sets that you can access. So let's head on over to Snowflake and see what this looks like. Hey, I just wanted to jump in real quick and let you know that enrollments for the Master and Snowflake program are currently open. It includes 10 in-depth expert level modules closely aligned with the SnowPro Advanced Architect and Data Engineer certifications, but crucially, it gives you real-world expert level advice and access to download my patterns and approaches I use with my enterprise skill customers. Check out the link in the video description below to apply. Let's get back to the video. So here we are in the Snowsite Web UI. We're going to create a new SQL worksheet. And notice now we've got this little tab saying Ask Copilot. We can hide that or we can click on it and make it available. It says it's in preview. 
and also it says welcome to Snowflake Copilot and it can help you with a number of things. So it can write SQL queries based on your available data. It helps to explore data, learn about Snowflake concepts and features, but it also mentions a couple of warnings. It may take a few seconds to complete a response and it may generate inaccurate responses. So let's start working with it and testing it out. What can I actually do? So let's type in a question. What types of questions can I ask about this data set? Now, if I don't pick anything else, initially, it will ask me to select a database and schema first because it needs to know the context. So down here, I can select my database. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to pick Snowflake sample data, and I'm going to pick one of the TPCH performance baseline data sets. So now I've got my database and scheme I'm going to work with. Let me try that again. What type of questions can I ask about this data set and see what comes back? Okay, so it's telling me it's a performance benchmark data. It's got tables related to orders, regions, parts, line items, etc., etc. Um, it also gives me what is the total revenue generated from orders. So a sample question, a sample business question is generated. And it's telling me here, if you want to know about the total revenue generated from orders, I need to then query the orders and look at some in the O underscore total price column. It also gives me other questions. Which region has the most customers? Again, tell me that I would need to join tables together. We could also ask further clarifying questions about the data, such as what type of events can I fill to buy? Let's try that one. We'll paste that in there. And again, it's using the context where we're at and it's telling you what you can do. So it's looking at order events. Using the orders table, you can filter by order date, order priority, order status, or the shipping priority. And again, it's looking at other tables within this context. So it's really helping you explore the data set without even having to open up on the navigation pane on this side and having to manually explore that. Super fast, super efficient. Again, you don't need to trust it 100%, but it can expedite that process of data analysis, especially if you're unfamiliar with a new data set that you need to work with. Let's move on and look at how we can construct and run a SQL statement. And we're gonna ask how many orders were there in the past year? We're not gonna specify yet, we're just gonna see how it deals with this. So here we go. So it's given me um, an approach. So it's telling me what it's gonna do. So it's gonna use the orders table. It's gonna filter on the orders date column to only include the orders for the past year. And it's gonna use the orders table and filter on that order date column. And it's gonna count the number of orders. It also gives me the SQL to do that. If I look at the SQL, it's using everything from today the current date and looking at the previous 12 months of data by using the year part of the date and subtracting one from that. So again, it's not looking at 2023 and because today we're in 2024. If I was more specific with the query, it would do that, but it's actually taking it literally how many were in the past year and giving us a query that will do that and also explaining the approach. If I click add, it immediately adds that SQL to my open worksheet. I could also click run and it would paste it into the worksheet and also run it. Notice I've got zero orders. So let's find where our orders are then. So um, let's say how many orders have there been year by year. And let's see how it constructs this query. So again, we're adding a level of complexity. It's giving us the approach again. It's providing us a SQL. I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm just gonna click run. And see what comes up. And whilst that's running, we can see it's going to use the orders table. It's going to extract the year from the order date column. It's going to group the orders by that extracted year and then count the orders in each group. So here we go from 1992 through to 1998. It's showing me the orders. Um, we can also ask other questions about this, like um, what was the most expensive? So again, gives us the approach, gives us the SQL. It's construct an query of the orders table and order it by the total price. If I click run on that, let it execute. We'll get the order key in the total order price, 558,000. If we scroll back up, we look at what else we can query with Snowflake Copilot within this data set. So we've got customers, nation and region. So we can say um, which countries didn't order any items. So we're getting a little bit more complicated now. We're forcing it to join nation to customer to orders. And let's just add that to our query window so we can take a look at it. 
and space this out. I'm going to get rid of the other queries. So we've got returning the nation name from the nation table. Well, let's, um, we're just going to execute that manually in here rather than click run on the code part side of things. Uh, we've got no results. So it must mean that every nation that we've got in here has made an order. So let's have a look at that. Um, give me the number of orders and average, we'll do average cost per order by nation. So again, join those three tables together. Let's see what this comes up with. Every nation should have some orders. So we've got 25 rows in here, bunch of orders and average cost of order. Um, let's just validate something. How many nations are there in total? We expect all of them made a sale. And if all of them appear in here, we've got 25 rows. So let's have a look if that is right. If there's 25 nations, which there are, that previous answer was probably correct. Finally, one more question. Um, who was our best customer? Let's make it a bit vague and see how it determines the best customer. And again, even though I didn't specify it, it's telling me the approach it's taken is the one with the highest total spending. So it's making some assumptions based upon the question I've asked. Some cases that could be really beneficial and really help. In other cases, it might jump to the wrong assumption but it's given us the approach so we can validate um, what that looks like. It also should keep the context as well. If you use ChatGPT within the same session, it'll keep the context so you can keep building on it and building on it. So I'm gonna say, can you give me the SQL for this query? And it's using the previous questions I've asked and it's given me this uh, query for the number of nations from the previous one, but also in the same uh, answer, it's given me the one where I'm looking for the best customer and it's assuming that best is by who spent the most. So we've got this customer here, customer 694366, total spending. Again, got a new data set in Snowflake, you're unfamiliar with it, or let's say it's your first week on a new job in Snowflake and you've been asked to do some analysis, Copilot could be your best friend initially in helping you understand what data you've got to work with and how best to explore that data set. Hope you found our video useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos coming very soon.